This is a 2020 Honda Ridgeline. This is the RTLE trim and it is an all wheel drive. Today, we're going to review it. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a Ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Hey Rob, today we're taking a look at this beautiful Honda Ridgeline. It's a 2020 and it is the uh, RT, uh, RTLE trim level. That's right. But say, before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know how to operate all the technology that's built inside, plus you like cool collector car stories, take a moment and hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? All right. Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Oh, yeah. All right, so welcome to our detailed uh, interior review here of the driver's information screen and the infotainment center. So uh, on the driver's information screen, you know, we're talking about this particular uh, rectangle right here. And the only things that you can adjust on here um, are what screen shows. And to do that, you've got an up and a down arrow. Okay, and that's and then a reset button if you want to reset it. But yeah, other than that, you can't change the information that you see. You do get a fair number of screens. So for instance, if I push this, I get trip A, then I get trip B, then I get a compass. And if I had my navigation running, my turn by turn directions would show up in here. Okay, you get uh, tire pressure and then oil life. Um, you can press and rehold on this screen. It's a blank screen, but you can press and rehold to change the speed units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Okay, and then we're back to A again. So that is the only thing that you have. It's, so it's very, very simplified. Um, they've taken a, a lot of that detail out. I, I don't know if I'm a fan of that or not. But certainly for people that are not super tech savvy, it gives you all the basic information you need with just a click of the button and no going into a sub menu or going anywhere else. So if you like that kind of stuff, you'll really like this. All right, so um, let's move over to the uh, infotainment screen because that is all there is um, on the driver's information center. Okay. On the infotainment screen, this is again a 540 watt sound system. It has got eight speakers. It is uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capable, and it has also got uh, AM FM radio and XM radio. There are no physical buttons on here. It is all just these touch buttons. Okay, you do have some controls on your steering wheel, and I'll get to them in a little bit. Okay, so. Um, up here, you've got a power on off for your audio. You've got a home button, which basically gives you all of the icons that you have. There are no other icons down here. The one that you saw on the second page here shows you some widgets that are downloaded. So like a calculator, an internet browser, that kind of thing. Okay. Down here, you've got a, a touch volume button. The, the thing that I dislike about this, I think I would find frustrating, was that once you slide your hand, once you get to the plus sign, if you go above it, it clicks on the home screen and brings you there. So the best thing you can do is just use the volume control on the steering wheel, which is really handy and it works very, very nicely. Okay? This menu button doesn't do anything unless you're in an app, one of these apps here. Okay? If you're in like navigation or phone or audio, it'll then bring up another menu. Okay? And I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, this is, of course, you're just your back button, and then you have your screen dimness. So if I click it once, I can physically adjust the screen brightness. If I click it again, it gives me like a day to our nighttime uh, view. And if I click it again, it shuts all the light off. Everything is still functioning, it's just that there's no backlight. Click it one more time, and it all comes back. Okay, so over on the steering wheel, you do have a, a several audio controls for the infotainment screen. Now, for the most part, when you use these, you'll see some things change up here, but mostly you're seeing stuff change in the driver's information screen. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I wish they would do is let it stay on the screen for longer, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to switch sources. Now, if I go up here, you'll see it goes from AM to Sirius XM to FM. Okay, now it's also doing that uh, on the very top of the infotainment screen. Okay. 
but if I let my if I let the source button go, see it disappears right away. So it's it's kind of hard. It, like it doesn't leave it there for enough time. But anyways, you have it there. Now let's say that I am on FM radio. If I press the left or right buttons here, I can change presets. Okay, so actually I'm on XM radio, sorry. But here I can change the presets using the left and right arrows. And then I have volume up and down. Okay, uh, so I can do that for whatever source that I'm on. So if you're, you know, if you're driving, you just need to concentrate here. You can look here. What you can't do is like individually tune something. All right, so. Uh, you also have a couple of other buttons, and they're um, a, a little interesting here. For instance, this button here typically will bring up and switch um, between navigation phone and audio on your infotainment screen. However, it will not do that when you're at the home position. So what you have to do is basically click on audio or navigation or phone, and then when you press this, now I see you can switch between them. And you just go there, don't do anything else, wait for a minute, it pops up. So if I wanna to go to navigation, I click it once, and there it goes. Okay, so um, let's go back to home for a minute again. Let's go back to audio. And again, if I hit the submenu, now I get sound and settings. So if I go to sound, now I get bass and treble, fade and balance, uh, a, a center a speaker, subwoofer, and then speed controlled volume. So the faster you go, the louder it, it is. And then you can set the, that level right here or go back to default. Okay, if I go back and let's say that I go to, um, I wanna go to this. If I go to phone, okay. And I hit the sub menu. Well, it's not going to give me anything because I'm not connected. But then it would give you a different thing. So this button, depending on whether you're in navigation, audio, or phone, will give you a different something. A little extra menus, a few extra things that you can do. All right. So let's take a look at uh, uh, just uh, for a minute. We'll look at, take a look at navigation, and we'll take a look at audio, and we'll take a look at settings. And I'll go to settings first. This is where you're gonna find your safety stuff. So if I click on vehicle, now you got driver assist system setup, meter setup, driving position setup, keyless access, lighting setup, door setup, and maintenance info. So I'm gonna to go to driver assist system setup. So again, safety systems, forward collision warning, uh, adaptive cruise control, forward vehicle detect beep, road departure, so on. If you want to change one of those, you need to click on it. Then you can make whatever settings they allow you to. So in this case, it's short, normal, or long. And to change it, you just click on it. And press, press OK. I'm, I'm not obviously going to change it. To go backwards, you use the back button right here. Let's do uh, one more. Um, road departure mitigation setting. Normal, wide, or warning only. Okay. Wide will give you a little more leeway in your steering before it, you know, it tries to steer you back. Uh, normal is a little less, and then a warning is um, it just audibly, invisibly warns you. It doesn't pull at your steering wheel, which I do like that feature. Okay. I'm going to go back for a minute. That's where your safety systems are. Okay, so uh, if I go over here to meter setup, this is where I can... Um, Select the language, um, <laughs> adjust outdoor temperature display. Um, so if you think it's too hot outside, you can, let's see, oops, I went too far. You can lower it by five degrees. So you notice that right now, uh, my outdoor temp is saying is 87. If I click this, it is now 82 degrees. It's all of a sudden got cooler. And if you live in a cold climate and want it warmer, you can do the reverse. Just to be nice, I'm going to go back and, and put that back at zero. <laughs> okay, trip A, trip B, reset the timing on there, adjust alarm volume, turn by turn display, um, display in kilometers or miles. So um, you can actually turn the, the uh, turn by turn display off. That's what shows up in your driver's information screen. So if you don't want that at all, you can actually turn that off. All right, so. 
Let's go back here. Um, let's do uh, one more. Let's do a uh, lighting setup. So you got your interior light dimming time, your headlight auto off timer, um, auto interior illumination sensitivity, auto headlight on with wiper on, auto light sensitivity. So if I go here, if you're if you're driving at night, you've had a car with auto lights, and they flick back and forth between bright and dim. You may notice, is, is, and now this is a 2020, so I'm expecting it to be better, but on earlier cars, like my cars, my earliest car was a 2005 with that on. And, oh my gosh, it, it, if there were road signs, it would go, like, bright to dim. Uh, so you can set the sensitivity right here. So if, it, if, it's, if it's turning off your brights too often, then you can turn the, light, the sensitivity up or down and see if you can fix that. All right. But everything in here works the same way. You click on it, it'll give you an option. You can click on it to change it, and every menu will be slightly different, on or off, or high, low, or whatever it is. But that's how you get to it. All right, we're gonna go back here. We're gonna go back one more. All right, so let's go into system here. Take a look, quick look at that. You can change your display settings, your background color, your guidance of volume, like from your navigation, text message volume, voice recognition volume. Um, voice prompt volume but you know on or off song by voice on or off uh, just a lot of different settings you can do under the display tab you can change the background color okay under sound and beep then this is you saw this under all because it's all then display and beep but just easier way to eliminate some things to so you're not looking at so much information okay and under audio then you do, you have uh, in the HD mode, you can have that as auto or, or um, analog, okay? And then XM radio, um, you have a whole bunch of different settings you can make, and you do it in the same way, click on them, read the description, and click on the appropriate item. Okay, um, let's go back one more. I wanna talk about the audio. So if you click here, um, you got your source button up here, which you can use your steering wheel button too, but you can change the source up here and you can click. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it on Sirius XM for a minute. And then what you have is your presets down here. And of course this arrow brings you more presets. There's 12 total. Scan, and then you can look at categories. Um, you can look at channels, you can skip, okay? A lot of different things. You notice the map button stays up there all the time. So let's go to source again, and I'm gonna to go to the FM radio. And if I'm going to uh, tune the radio, I can use these buttons. And this is where it would kind of be nice to have a physical button to, to, to do that, um, because you can't do it from the steering wheel controls. If you do the steering wheel controls, it's just changing the presets. You'll notice that it has a little peak, and I'll have that in, in Sirius XM, it'll have it in, in most audio sources. If you click it, oops, I gotta click the right spot, okay? It gives you a little larger screen and some more things. Now I got the station list, I've got the presets over here, okay? And if I went to my sources and I went to XM, you're gonna see the same little bump um, right here. If I move that down, See, so you can change that. You can see a little more information on the, from the bottom or a little more information from the top, depending on what you need to see. Okay, let's go back to the home screen in a minute. Um, I wanna talk about navigation quickly. It's got a really nice navigation map on it. Um, but basically, again, you can press the uh, the little submenu and, and then this is gonna go where to and then you can uh, type in your address, okay? Um, you also have, um, here, select data to display. Did the direction of travel or the elevation? You can change that, okay? And then this button brings up the same thing that this one did, okay? This does have uh, real-time traffic updates. So that, I'm assuming, is what that icon is for. Then, of course, if you just want to search, you have the magnifying glass, and you can go home, um, Honda dealers, places, addresses, restaurants, gas stations. You can look at categories. You can look at things that are saved. You, you can look at recent things. Then you can hit the down arrow, and you can look at all these other items. Okay, if I click on this menu, I can set the home location or remove shortcuts. Yeah, so if you buy it used, then you can remove someone else's shortcuts. All right, 
and then um, we're going to take a look at info. Info here, um, you, you can have a trip computer. If I click on that, you get current drive and history of trip A. Okay. And a lot of information in there. Oops, I went back too far. If I want voice info, okay, useful commands, phone commands, audio commands, climate control commands, on-screen commands, and music search and general commands. So if you're brand new to the vehicle, you want to know what can I say, this is where you want to go. And then you have some voice settings and even a getting started area. Hey, um, if I want to just see what type of audio system I have, because I'm uh, maybe I'm, I'm getting an accessory or something, I can do that if I just click on system device information. If I click on system info, there it is. Very kind of a gobbledygook, uh, techie numbers, but somebody might want to know what exact model number you have, and that's where you find it.